texturize the things with the flick and paint. Wait, we paint. <laughs> Wow. So let's say you have like a character smoking a cigarette. Instead of having like a 3D smoke uh, being simulated by 3D tools, it's actually 2D uh, drawn uh, frame by frame and uh, gets this almost cartoony effect. Welcome, welcome, people, dems. Welcome to my channel and welcome to room 2703. Um, so, uh, this has been such an awesome like week in terms of getting those videos out because I really wanted to do something because like, we've hit 2,000 subscribers and I don't feel like I've, I've celebrated that enough. So, I wanted to make sure there was like content out there for everybody, like, so everyone had. You know, everyone that comes to Room 2703, like some people come for Morissette, some people come for Gabrielle, some people come for um, Dimash now, some people come for Sarah. Some so I wanted to make sure that everyone had something like, and to give them like a double, like a, like a double whammy of that as well. But what I wasn't able to get round to was my arcane peeps. This week I'm uh, definitely focusing a bit more on just getting some content out for Anyone that, that is, that's come here uh, from the Arcane series that I absolutely loved. It was so good. I still haven't really come to terms with where we're at with that story. It's too, it's, it's too hard to think about. <laughs> um, but my spirit guide, who has been my spirit guide for all things Arcane since I started reacting to that series, uh, Babette, um, who... I don't, and I, I can see as well in the comments that it's not just me, I think I've got value from the amazing insight that Babette has when it comes to this show, all the kind of things that are in and around that. So again, just a massive thank you for that. It, it, you just made, you've made the journey with it so much more enjoyable because it's, it's been great to be able to talk about it and stuff and, and all the other people that have had comments to make about it as well, it's been amazing. So Babette mentioned that actually there was an, a, a kind of interim show that was coming up called Bridging the Rift kind of like a behind the scenes look at the making the show and whatever else so I'm already gassed about this I'm not gonna lie because I, I just just watching how they put things together and whatever just sounds really cool so the first episode is called I only dream in risky I don't even know what that means okay so let's uh let's see what this is saying it's already had 928,000 views so I'm guessing it's, it's gonna be pretty decent right let's see what it's saying Fair enough. With League, the thing is that you, you play these characters over and over and over. Hundreds, in some cases, thousands of hours, people sit with these characters. Uh, I'm actually just messing around in the jungle right now. Where are you playing? Mordekaiser. Because he's heavy metal. They're always in this one map. So, again, so for anyone that has watched me watching Arcane, like, hopefully you know that, like, I don't know anything about League of Legends, like, at all. So, um, I didn't even know that that's what it looked like. I've only just subscribed to their channel because of this show, so I'm like, okay, cool. So that's what the game looks like. Okay. What do they eat? What is their normal life like? You know, like what kind of families would they have? We knew our king was going to be the very first deep story expression of the legends. There's enough video games where the audience asks for a movie or a show for years and years and years, and then they make it, and then it sucks, and then guess what? People stop asking. We're like, if we make something that isn't at least good, then we're really, really harming the league IP. Yeah, good point. Again, not to bring it back to like X Men and stuff, but if I think about how many, and it's kind of it's kind of gone both ways with movies as well as some of the games. Like there've been some games that've been absolutely atrocious, and then there've been some movies which, in my humble opinion, 
in comparison to the cartoons have also been atrocious so you've got to be really careful right now obviously you know the phase is uh, trying to wrap up season one um, this is echo was about here just uh, oh yeah it was out here right I forgot um, <laughs> here she will be the worst kept secret of the show everyone will know it's well, echo when they see him with the mask on I mean you think? Yeah, of course. Uh, in the trailer, I've seen like several videos, people an analyzing it, and they're, they're like, already oh, this character people, let's say that is echo. absolutely not Echo. Well, but like, okay, yeah. but so the second <laughs> they see that he has the pocket watch, oh, true. everyone yeah. knows he's like the, uh, you know, the boy who shattered time. I mean, that, that's right. <laughs> I mean, I love the fact that, obviously, for the people that follow this game, they're like, obviously, obviously you know, this obviously, like, I'm just like, this is brand new information. <laughs> Hey. hey, how are you? How are you? I remember you showed me that we built like a special rig on Jinx. You can kind of control going her face from going yeah. looking more yeah. childish to like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, you have that somewhere to pull up? Yes. So when we first got the first rig of Jinx, the idea was to try to connect her somehow visually to what she was as a kid. Rounder face, bigger eyes, mm. uh, okay. look. We didn't want the typical like crazy girl uh, laughing around like a, like the Joker and just mm. making no sense. We really wanted to make her feel like deranged and, and emotionally affected by what she went through as a kid. I think we were a little bit worried about, you know, when we get to the adult jinx, that we just lose that like, I don't know, that beautiful little soul that just mm. almost just tries to prove to her older sister like hey like I can do this you know like believe in me I think we should never work on a project that that doesn't offer us something personal to explore I think for the story that we have it's a story about family it's a story about siblings that have a hard time mm -hmm. forgiving each other it's a world of technology kind of taking over and and us feeling like we're losing control over it. I think that those are just things that we as people think about and care about, you know, and I think we want to also ask some questions that we think should be asked without necessarily giving you the answer, but at least asking like, hey, does a person, you know, like Jinx deserve a second chance? And just on that point, like, because I remember having um, a little bit of, uh, not debate, but there's people talking about it in my comments on some of the videos and I remember someone saying anybody that even remotely blames Jinx is, is an a-hole um, or to words to that effect. And I remember thinking, but, but actually the impact that she's had has still been quite a big one. Do you know what I mean? So even though she might not, it might not have been born of her own doing, at what point does someone become responsible for their own actions, particularly by the end of, uh, of season one? Can a monster ever be forgiven? I Can they? Figure out, like, what is something that if you love it, a lot of people would love it? That's where you really should go hard. And I think that's what we tried with Arcane, you know? You tried and succeeded, we'll man. I think it has potential. You know, it's so interesting about this year is the fact that, like, they were unsure about where, I mean, I guess it's like anything that you're, that you're proud of and that you care about and has already got a brand and, and not wanting to fall down that path you spoke about earlier, but just hearing him talking about, you know, well, I think, I think it's got some legs and I think it's got potential, like, and look how loved it is. That's crazy. That was giving a lot of Stranger Things. A lot of Stranger Things. How you doing, bud? <laughs> the Skinks. I've had them for 23 years now. I got them when I was 15 and definitely old enough to make that kind of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. The thing when you work on story is that just generally speaking, they're it never stops. I feel like I just have voices in my head that argue a lot and every now and again something they say makes sense and then you write it down. Um, and that's basically, that's how, that's how the characters happen. Okay. These are um, obviously League of Legends characters mostly. I was original creative on 
like Riven up there and Ari and uh, let's see, Wukong, Nautilus, um, Lee Sin. And then there's just, I don't know, that guy I thought was cool. So I did, I, I did go to school for writing. You know, I went out to LA. One of the things that I stumbled upon was a truly bare bones, desperate sounding Craigslist post for a video game startup. My first and consistent reaction to that was this company has no chance. <laughs> Lee is honest. I started playing in beta and I found, yeah, my, the job offering to work in customer support at Riot on Craigslist. Um, would you let me to be interviewed by Alex? Yep. F for the record. Uh... <laughs> I think League was just really fun because it felt like there was kind of like the, the fingerprint of the people who made the game was so palpable when you played it because the characters were so quirky, they were so different. You could just kind of tell people were just enjoying making these characters. Early Champ concept meetings were so fun. We only had the one conference room and it would just be everyone at the company who liked that, who was enthusiastic about it, just comes in and you'd show up with something, right? You'd be like, here's this sweet art that I found or here's this idea that I just jotted down. How do we turn that into a champion? I think the reason that we oh. focused on Jinx was because, I don't know, Jinx just always had this spirit at the company. Katie D'Souza did this, and it wasn't a sketch, it was like a full concept of what she called Psycho Arsenal. It was not so different, honestly, from what Jinx looks like right now. You yeah. Know, long pigtails and just kind of like guns all over the place. I mean, everyone just fell in love with it immediately. <laughs> that is so cool. I love the fact that like, they had like a like a hybrid mind of people that were just so excited about just this this new thing that they were doing. Everyone just coming in with their ideas, and that actually, the person I can't remember the name you just said there, but the person that that drew that concept for Jinx, pretty much. I'm looking at that and I'm like, that look, that's that's Jinx, that's that's Jinx, that's the Jinx that we know today. That's wicked. Fine, Jinx, for characters that Alex and I always really liked. Bravo, sis. <laughs> We worked on them Whoa. together on you know the different kind of teams. Alex was working like the characters themselves, like their creative, their voiceover lines with you know other writers. She's such a loser, always ready to cry. And I worked on the music and on the cinematic on Jinx. So on the I want to try something fun right now. This so fun should have some kind of spike up, you know, like the mm -hmm. screechy. Okay, I'll try. Come on, shoot faster, just a little. That was, the, you know, the most storytelling I think we'd seen in a video at that point. I feel like I haven't seen that. I feel like I need to. I feel like I need to watch that. Arcane started when Alex and I sat down together and were thinking what the devil we should be doing next. Riot in general kind of struggled to put out nar like long form narrative content. Our goal was to have deeper storytelling, right? To, to not just do video game action. <laughs> or as we at the company tend to call it, fight porn. <laughs> I don't know if we call it that anymore, but that's what it always was. <laughs> and I totally know what you mean. I just always had this, this, this sense of obligation to the players, you know? It just felt like we, we created these characters and, and the players answered us by spending so much time with them and loving them and it just felt like they deserved to have better stories. Whenever Jinx kills someone, she actually gets kind of like amped up. If basically the promise is like... It would like, be nice to find some kind of thread, some sort of like emotional question thread. We had this amazing, amazing partner in Fortiche, this animation studio in Paris. We worked with them on the Jinx music video on the Imagine Dragons music video for Warriors. Haven't seen this either. They just always had this like this X factor of like these beautiful visuals, it's super artistic and everything. It just kind of always clicked, you know? Wow. I always thought that if there's any superpower that we had, 
the beginning to make Arcane a thing. It was whether or not we could really unleash the potential of Fortiche. That's looking amazing. Oh, the thief. Oh, triumph. I've been there. <laughs> it's probably a really poor French accent. Apologies, everybody. <laughs> Little Buddha. Hmm. He's the yes man of the, the company. He's saying yes to everything. <laughs> is this a good idea? Yes, it is. Can I do it? Yes, you can. <laughs> I believe in you, sir. <laughs> I believe in you. We do a mix of 2D and 3D. Because the 2D effects are done in um, 12 uh, image by second, then uh, and the animation is uh, 24, like uh, all the movie. So you have a, a, uh, a mix of style. <laughs> Geek with uh, dirty... <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> yes. It's more organic. Texturize the things that look like a painting. We we paint. <laughs> wow. So let's say you have like a character smoking a cigarette, instead of having like a 3D smoke uh, being simulated by 3D tools, it's actually 2D uh, drawn, uh, frame by frame, and uh, gets this almost cartoony effect. In fact, I, st I start to do this 2D mix. Sorry, I need to pause, need to pause it there a second because, as someone who is like somewhat creative, to absolutely no degree like these guys like but i do love painting and stuff it's just so interesting to think because in my in your head you do think okay that artists and stuff and you know that they are but you kind of think a lot of it is still done by like machinery now and like you know ai thinking and, and that kind of stuff but actually to see them sitting down there painting that's actually incredible man that is amazing 3d uh, since 20 years with music video it's so clever. Are you, are you feeling good about season one? I, uh, I, I, it's, uh, it's an interview right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the good mood. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
making you feel like there's a person filming whatever is happening. There was an imperfection that could only be human in how it moved and how it felt. What taste, man? I mean, I'm very impressed by this um, by this house because I feel like they've obviously come. They were, they were obviously pioneers in their field that made them stand out to these guys in the first place. Um, and even just looking at some of this stuff, you know, you would be you'd be hard pushed to to ignore like the kind of stamp that they've got there. A little bit close to you guys. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. That last um, image then, when I mean, you're saying that like you feel like someone is filming, it does feel as though that someone is filming her. Like, and those imperfections that can only be human. Like, again, you can see that and you can see how, if they are the ones that have run through into how Arcane has been built, you can kind of see where that their stamp has been. To be fair, the first answer when I, when I went to the right leadership was like, I think we should make a TV show about our characters. Uh, that is the highest budget ever spent on an animated series. It's gonna be great. First answer was no. Get out of the office. <laughs> oh really? Was it? That. That was like a oh crap. Like Christian has showed up with those like bold ideas and bold asks before, you know. And but this one was such a leap from sort of music video to like full animated show. It's so unbelievably daunting. And in the back of my mind, I'm going, I'm just going, how am I going to talk Christian out of this? Like, how am I going to help him realize that, like, we're jumping the shark here? And then I came back and said, okay, give me, give me, give me, give me, like, give me, like, $2,000. And they're like, okay, fine. And, and so we just started, you know, doing some concept, uh, some concept art. And it was like, okay, you know, th this looks really cool, right? Yeah, this looks pretty cool. I thought it was a great idea, but I also knew how difficult it was to pull something like this off. We have something called the video game curse, which is very few games have adapted into film and television. Yeah. One of the things that's really true that I think every creative can relate to is a lot of great creative ideas, they're fragile. They start off as a dream and an idea and a vision and they haven't been fleshed out necessarily. Okay, it was a little bit more, but now we can explore some 3D models and everything, like, like five grand, they're like, mm, okay. And, and I don't remember getting any of this money. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> sort of about how you negotiate, bro. Very unimportant. You got $2,000. <laughs> All right, this is our first behind the scenes in the writer's room. Alex, what year is it? 1922. And while we were developing the story, we also started working with Fartiche on these little spikes, you know, of like, hey, what would it look like if Vi was just in, like, in her apartment in Piltover? and she's like venting about how Powder, her little sister, you know, is just always messing up. You know, it was just a test of like, hey, like, can we even do animation where acting feels good? Wow. All you had to do was run, Powder. Didn't we spend a bunch of time preparing you for this? You and I? In the back of my mind, I was going, I kind of hope this loses steam because this is so unbelievably ambitious. Like, I don't know how in the world we're gonna pull this off. What's really interesting is that as a founder of a, of of um, of Riot Games, like he would have been at one point or another, surely, someone that was requesting or wanting something that seemed completely unbelievable. So it it does beg the question as to like, dude, you you've been in that position, man. Like, trust, trust you people. That's when I said, okay, could you give me like, I think it was like 65 grand or so. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> and there was this fight scene was sort of this you know, animation test with Jace and Vi on a rooftop. It was so sick, just in terms of how the characters were expressed and how they came to life. Like the, all those little incremental tests were all, they were just like, yeah, we need more of this. Yo! I think that was the time when I think they 
realized that I'm probably serious about yeah. this project. I said to them, well, I mean, you have concept art now for the characters, for environments, you have 3D models, you have animation test, you have material that we've had developed for the pilot. And I was like, are we going to do this or not? Wow. I wow. Like was, like, oftentimes not knowing what we're getting into was, was an advantage, because I think if we did know, we would have said, there's no way. Mm. I mean, animation tests, they were, it was beautiful, right? But it was just a small snippet of what the full series would be, and there were so many questions about, like, well, what is the full story? To me, the stakes are really high because we want to be respectful of players' time and, and trust. I'd for sure much rather not do a show than releasing something that's just OK. I don't know if anyone uh, among Riot's leadership necessarily thought that we would definitely be able to do it. But I think they all understood that we just had to try. You know, I mean, like this was this was a bet. It was a risky bet. You just kind of have to, at some point, make that bet. You know, otherwise, it's only gonna be ever. Yeah. For Tish was five people, so we had to build a studio of now 200, 250, 300 people, which is like, how do you build an animation studio? You know, we're a game company. How do you do that? That's a good point. That point for Tish has produced. Two, three, four, when I met Christian, I remember him talking about the character arcs and what's gonna happen in that episode and you know I've already that in mind and it's gonna be like so so emotional. And I was like, dude, you're crazy. We haven't even started the first minute of the, the show. I, I don't think he was realizing what he was getting into, but uh, I think he was he, he was a fool. <laughs> but the excitement <laughs> he had when he was talking about the, the show made the difference to me. Yeah. Even when there are a lot of... I just pause it again, but a lot of people do say that, don't they? Don't I mean, like, the, the infectiousness or the effective nature that you can have with an idea can just bring people on that train as well. It's like, well, if you're so passionate about this and you believe this so much, like, you're making me believe this. Like, the man is saying that, like, he had emotional parts of this show carved out before a single minute of it had even been made. Like, that's crazy. Question marks and obvious concerns and on paper it's not supposed to work because, you know, the experience isn't there and the resume isn't there. Like, that's when you, that's precisely when it's worth jumping into the deep end of the pool and learning how to swim. Il y avait plus de peur pendant le test que... That scene, man. That is incredible. Sorry. Like, just watching this and how it's all been put together and where it's come from and how many years in the making it's been. Wow. Thirty to a hundred. Ten months. Ten months on the first episode. Basically, we had the pilot, you know, wrapped up more or less, and now was the time to start working on, on the rest of this of the first season. We had an entire arc for the first season, I mean, filled with moments, you know, lots of art, lots of exploration, different locations, different characters, and we were already feeling the pressure of the, the sort of pipeline rolling. These episodes take a tremendous amount of time yeah. to wow. animate, and once the episode is in various stages of, of animation. Changes are possible, but, but any change is tremendously disruptive in terms of the, the amount of time and resources it takes to sort of, so you're, you're kind of locked in. So yeah, at some point, 
there was a meeting on my calendar. And I went to uh, Brian's office and there was like a bunch of people in there. He basically, he, he called me and told me like, hey, uh, you know, I just talked to Brandon and like everyone. It was basically like an intervention meeting. And by the way, that's what we do for everything, even a game. If we're like on the cups of launching and we think it's not right, like we'll we'll stop, we'll hold, we'll pivot, we'll cancel. Perhaps it's time I cut my losses. I mean, I think with everything creatively, you know, you're always kind of waiting for that that hammer to fall. We wanted to make sure the story that players got lived up to their expectations. If we couldn't do that, then we shouldn't do that. I like that commitment. That's fair, but the consensus was. You don't have the story yet, and it, it's not gonna work, you know. Are you joking? Oh, I'm loving this music. That is crazy to me to think that actually that there was nearly no arcane. So right at the end hour, they decided that they were going to can it because it was like, nah, actually, do you know what? Like, you ain't got the story. So it makes me question what what story did they have? Because someone in the in my comments on my video was like, oh, I'd made a comparison between this and Game of Thrones, which to me, again, fight me if you want to. To me, Game of Thrones still has one of the most rich and complex storylines um, of most modern animated animated most modern tv shows or films or whatever like adaptations to tv or whatever like the storyline in there was so like vigorously complex like, i draw parallels to to that straight away with this so to know that whatever they had was potentially like cancel cancel cancelable cancelable I don't think that's a word, but we'll run with it. It shocks me because it's just so incredibly good now. It's just so good. So I'd, I'd love to know what it was that they, like, what story did they have? Maybe the second episode goes into that, but this is brilliant. Um, I'm enjoying this. So, yes, I'm, I was going to roll it on into the same video, but um, I'll probably make it into two. So, so far, I'm very, very happy that I decided to watch this. So I decided. There's not much that Babette's going to recommend to me that I'm not going to watch, so... <laughs> so that's what episode two. Let's see what episode two is saying. See y'all in a bit. Oh, and if you did like this, then obviously please do like and subscribe. I say obviously, like if you didn't like, then you haven't got to do that. But I would really appreciate it if you did like, because then it really helps the channel. So good looking out. <laughs> and I see you for episode two. Oh, that one's only got six hundred twenty-five thousand views. So, but maybe it's only six days ago. So maybe that's about to creep up. But yeah, see you in a bit.